weapons gallery the historical development of weaponry helps us understand the evolution of man man first developed arrowheads of stone that could hunt animals successfully for food and protection the discovery of the metals which increased the strength of the weapons was the most spectacular the marathas employed a variety of weapons their weapons exhibit all stages of weapon evolution stone bow and arrow sword spear mace artillery are some examples of weaponry under the peshwa's direction the holkar army utilized stones as projectiles in mountainous areas and produced an impact similar to gunshots during the holkar era various varieties of shivaji daggers was fashionable The Pindaris were employed by Yashwantrao Holkar. The Maratha spear, which had a length of 12 to 18 feet, was their primary weapon. Ballam, Barcha, and Bhala are the three categories into which these spears fell. Malhar Rao Holkar combined the usage of these spears with swords, a bow, and arrows during the Third Panipat War, which was commanded by Sadashiv Bhau. Babur was the first to establish the cannon's hegemonic position in war despite the fact that Indutmesh had invented them. The Holkars also acquired numerous cannons. The most cannons were produced from Maharaja Yashwantrao Holkar I and they were employed during the 1857 revolution as well as by Malhar Rao Holkar and Hari Rao Holkar. Matchlock, flintlock, carbine, musket and rifles are a few of the significant weapons used throughout the Holkar era. Archives Gallery There are some notable treaties and agreements on exhibit including the Treaty of Birhanpur of 1804 a 16 foot document signed by Maharaja Sindhya and the British. as well as the railways agreement between the nawab shah jahan begum and the government of india you can also see letters by the first deputy prime minister of india sardar vallabhbhai patel written to sir george jivaji rao sindhya the maharaja of gwalior state after a successful accession of hyderabad to the indian union Additionally displayed were documents from the archives of the princely states of Bhopal, Indore, and Gwalior. Letters regarding the Viceroy's state entry into Delhi, 1912, the Royal Proclamation of King George V of England, 1919, etc., are displayed. The first cabinet of Madhya Bharat state, 1948. Maharaja Jivaji Rao Sindhya's appointment as the Raj Pramukh of Madhya Bharat 1948 President Rajendra Prasad later etc and other documents related to the Madhya Bharat state are among those that have been displayed Manuscripts Gallery The materials on which the inscriptions are inscribed depend on the text, the chosen materials and their availability. Durable materials include stone, copper, iron and silver. Bhujapatra was widely used in ancient times for writing books and lengthy texts. The narratives of the Greek author Curtius contain the earliest recorded mention of the use of Bhujapatra. In India, paper was first introduced by Muslims. The Gupta Brahmi script dates to the 5th century AD. The manuscripts on paper obtained from Gujarat and Rajputana are dated to 14th century AD. Text was also recorded using cotton cloth as the writing surface. This gallery houses significant manuscripts written by the Jain Acharya Yashodev Suri. An address to his student Shri Kshamendra. The book is titled Neshedya Charita. It was written in somewhat 1756 in the Sanskrit language and Nagari script. 
significantly only a few chapter of the famous poet matiram's rasral are available in the nimai version with all of the chapter titles intact this poem was written in hindi and devnagari script by shri leela gajdha the owner of the copyright in vikram samvat 1898 Freedom Struggle Gallery Important documents displayed regarding the Bundela Revolt 1842 and the Great Revolt of 1857 have been exhibited A wall dedicated to the efforts of the Bundela Revolt of 1842 mention the revolt led by the Bundela Thakurs in Sagar Jawahar Singh and Madhukar Singh who rose in open rebellion against the government possession of land in the Sagar Narmada territories Other documents of Nawab Sikandar Begum included information on the migration of merchants the announcement of a revolt for the capture of Nana Saheb in 1857 British control over the Gwalior fort in 1857 Narayan Singh's escape from prison in 1857 Raja Mardan Singh's letter to Tatia Tope Freedom related documents have been displayed from the Jallianwala Bagh tragedy of 1919 a lecture on the Indians responsibility during Mahatma Gandhi Satyagraha of 1930 unrest in the prabhat ferries of indore of 1930 and a letter from the freedom fighter luftullah khan nazmi from 1941 additionally images and records of notable people and significant occasions have been shown coins gallery man used to exchange products and acquire the objects he needed before currency was invented literature from the vedic era demonstrates that cows were frequently exchanged for precious items before man began to create and utilize coins as common marks of exchange both movable and immovable properties were previously exchanged through bartering The creation of coinage occurred at the same time as the expansion of commercial activities. Ordinary symbols were used on the earliest coins. But as time went on, royal emblems, pictures and religious symbols started to appear on the coins. While older coins only had small geographic reach as they gained popularity, it became customary to include the name of the monarch or the mint's mark. There have been known coins made of gold, silver, copper, lead, bronze and other alloys. Leather coins are said to have been produced by Muhammad Tughlaq. The dates of ascension, years of power, domains and religious convictions are recorded on the coins of Muslim rulers. The coin collection from the Burhanpur Mint, one of the most important mints running during the Mughals, is a fascinating element of the exhibition.
टेक्सटाइल गैलरी द सेकेंड मोस्ट फंडामेंटल नीड फॉर अ मैन आफ्टर ईटिंग इज क्लोदिंग इट रिफ्लेक्ट द रीजनल टेस्ट एंड ट्रेडिशन ड्यू टू क्लाइमेट एंड एथनिक डाइवर्सिटीज इंफ्लुएंसेस The clothing on display in the gallery pays homage to the customs and apparel of royal houses including the Holkars, Nawabs of Bhopal, Sindhias and Bundelas. The headgear costume is represented by the traditional turbans of Malwa and Bhopal. The gallery's collections include the collections of Nawab Shah Jahan Begum as well as the Sherwanis of Bhopal royal members and the turbans of Holkar, Sindhia and Bundelas. The gallery's carpet exhibits showcase Holkar's affluent taste. India has long been known for its loom manufacturing. A few examples of the Madhya Pradesh loom tradition include the Maheshwari and Chanderi sarees as well as the clothing with bag and chanderi designs. The most well-known traditional prints made on bag looms are those with printed designs like pankha, chameli, amadi and gadwali that are colored with herbal dyes. The Royal Art Gallery. This gallery exhibits elaborate artwork that the nawabs of Bhopal purchased as well as some Sindhia products. Additionally, the collection contains well-executed works of art that they were gifted. Begum Sultan Jahan ruled the Bhopal state from 1901 to 1926, the first quarter of the 20th century. She was deeply interested in both art and education. She worked hard to establish the King Edward Museum. The collection includes artworks from China, Tibet, Japan and Europe. in addition to all of india's major regions enameled vase hukka ornamented ceramic flower vases flower stands birds and animals in silver and metals etc are a few of the gallery's significant exhibits jewelry boxes gold plated silver cups and miniature tombs are a few of the items with a regal touch the metal avlokiteshwar padmapani the vase teapot the onyx cup etc further display the monarch of bhopal's refined preferences metal ceramic and wooden items all exhibit excellent craftsmanship stamps gallery many people's favorite pastime is collecting stamps which sheds light on bygone eras stamps can be used to learn about history politics science and culture on may 1 1840 the first stamp was sold in britain for 1 penny it has a print out of queen victoria on it The smallest and largest stamps were both released in Colombo in 1863 and China in 1931 respectively. Before 1947 there were 300 stamps issued in India. As of the present that number has grown to 2900. There are three different kinds of stamps: revenue stamps, government postal work, and public postal work. For the past 165 years, the post and telegraph department has provided its services. The collection of stamps on display include the old British stamp from 1840 as well as stamps from Gibraltar, Malta, China, Hong Kong, and Ceylon. as well as stamps from native indian states like jammu and kashmir chamba sirmor patiala alwar indore bhopal and gwalior autographs gallery 
Every era gives rise to great individuals whose activities and actions have left an indelible mark on history. New generations will always be inspired by their memories. Any museum's collection of photographs contain precious artifacts. It is an experience in and of itself to read the writings and letters of such outstanding men. Here are on exhibit the signatures and priceless letters of notable individuals including one of India's first president Dr Rajendra Prasad written in Hindi to one of the maharaja of an Indian state it reads Maharaja Sahib I am embarrassed that I would not reply sooner a letter was received in my absence and I did not receive it the letter has been misplaced I apologize and request if you can send me another copy I am pleased to know some friends have decided to establish a memorial. While I am not worthy enough to be given a place there, if you insist, I would not be able to deny it. Other letters written by famous figures in the fields of culture, art and religion include Acharya Shri Ram Sharma, Ramdas Gore, Ramanand Chatterjee, Asit Kumar Haldar, Lalit Mohit Sen, Hanuman Prasad Poddar and others.